What's going on, everybody? What's going on? This is Vibey Talks with Javon. I'm your host, Javon. And today's guest is an actor, writer, producer, who is also a Western Michigan University alumni. Show your love for Darius Devontae Green. What's going on, man? Yo, 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 what's up, man? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, just to let you all know, we met working this back this indie film as background actors. It was shot in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Good times. I don't think they have released it after all these years. I was on no. Pluto, on demand, Tubi. Is it Tubi? Can't fight it. <laughs> have you found it? I have. I don't. It's not done yet. I don't think. Um, and actually, I think it's been uh, some kind of litigation and stuff going on with that. Oh, what's the tea on that, man? I need to know. I need to know this stuff. Well, I, I, I think it's between, from what I know or what I assume, uh, like the investors and producers, some, something happened, and yeah, there, there's some litigation. Or, God like damn it. Yeah. Because, yo, that was like, I was at least 23. Like, we met at least... We were young. <laughs> that was seven years ago? Eight years ago? Yeah, it was it was yeah, it was back in the day. <laughs> Damn, what is really good? Well, I mean <laughs> I mean at least I got to meet the guy, the father from Boy Meets World. That was cool. Right. That was yeah. that was kinda cool. Um, so tell us about yourself and your career. Well, uh my name is Darius Devontae Green, actor, writer, producer. Uh, I was born in Chi Town. Uh, I was there until I was about five or six years old and then my mom moved me and my brother to uh minnesota and i was pretty much um raised there so i usually say i'm from minnesota oh cool uh, yeah yeah i've been acting since like fourth grade grade school um on and off been doing little plays here and there but i was a sports guy i played all the sports and football so i wasn't really uh taking acting too seriously it was just a hobby for me and I, I really liked it back then yeah and then uh you know I, I went to college you know I was pursuing the the football dream okay uh as a career and just as you mentioned as you know I went to Washington Michigan University and I was just plagued by just injuries like a gust of wind could blow on me and I, I would have got injured it was just it was just horrible gosh darn it so, <laughs> my dream yeah my dream quickly dwindled for the football and that was uh it was hard to get over and then you know uh i'm like okay let me start looking into acting a little bit more again and i started doing background work like you said I, that's where i met you on one of the background uh work i did I did uh, short films, and then I eventually started booking small indie films. And then I started to, you know, gain more experience, build a little resume, a reel. And then I just decided to move out to L.A., just jumped out to L.A. Uh, I was there for three years. I was booking things here and there, but it was a, it was a grind. It was a grind for sure. I bet. I got uh, stories. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went through a lot of difficulties, you know, mentally, emotionally, and financially. You know, it's expensive out there. Uh, eventually, L.A. kind of just, you know, lack of a better word, chewed me up, spit me out. I, um, you know, I realized I moved there probably earlier than I should have. But I did, I, I built my resume pretty good out there, and I made a lot of great connections. So um, I don't regret it. But uh, after the three years in L.A., I moved back home, you know, just to get my mind right, my soul right, my finances and everything right, like that. You know, I worked a nine to five, but I still had my one foot in the industry. I was doing acting um, here and there, you know, when I was available. And then after a few years of that, uh, I was planning on moving back to L.A., but then I decided, you know, let me, uh, let me try Atlanta, see what that's going on, you know, see what's going on with that. Yeah, I hear about that. So here I am right now, you know, just full steam ahead. All right. Do you like it over there? I love it. It, it, it matches my, you know, my uh, my vibe, my attitude and stuff like that. So I like it. It's not as not as fast, you know what I mean, as L.A. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's it, I like it. Hey, what's going on, you guys? What's going on? We are back. Vibey Talks with Javon. I'm with my special guest, Darius Devontae Green. And, you know, just getting back to the subject of, you know, acting and the acting world. How do you feel? And then just give me your whole point of view about this. Um, is there enough room for more black men actors or male actors to succeed in film? Yes, um, I think so now more uh than any time because i think there's more opportunities um for black males i think people are giving black males more, more opportunities to play different type of roles you know besides, besides the um stereotypical roles as you know right uh, i also think there's more like executives and writers and black writers people of color that's creating content and uh you know, giving black males, uh, you know, more opportunities as well. So, you know, you can you can kind of see it now. You're seeing a lot of more, I guess, um, people of color and certain leading roles or, you know, um, season regulars and things like that. So it's definitely moving in a great direction for uh, black males. That's great. That's great to hear. And then what about moving to L.A.? Atlanta, New York City. Are those the best moves to make for actors right now? Well, right now, I'm, uh, I don't know any. I'm sure, I'm not sure anywhere uh, technically is the best because of COVID and all. Right. Um, you know, productions are starting up and then shutting down shortly after, and it's just the mess right now. But, um, I mean, personally, I like. Atlanta. I like the vibe. There's a lot of work here. It's not as expensive as a uh, LA or NYC. And um, for sure, I mean, I yeah. think it was like Northern Georgia. I was looking at because you know I'm in Tennessee right now, and uh, I was looking at Northern Georgia because you know it's not too far from Atlanta, like proper where all the film is happening, and right. the rent you can get a nice one be- one bedroom apartment. For like five hundred dollars, right? <laughs> that equivalates yeah. to like maybe a closet in New York City. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. with maybe a, a a furry friend to be uh, sleeping around you. I mean, yeah, throw that in there. That, yeah, that's, that's about five hundred. Yeah, <laughs> let me throw that bone in it. Uh, <laughs> but um, I was also wondering about: Do you feel that anyone can be an actor now just be just by creating content? Well, technically, yes. Like, if you create content, um, acting, then uh, you can call yourself an actor. But, um, you know, there's definitely levels to it. And, you know, but some, for some, it's just a hobby. Others, it's a their career. life, their career. So it depends on, you know, I guess what, what you're doing. Um, right. I don't think that it's easier for actors to make content. Um, oh, I do think. Sorry. Excuse me, I do think it's easier for actors to make content and put themselves out there nowadays. Um, there's a lot more resources and technology for people to create content, and it doesn't cost that much. So um, for sure, yeah, I think it's just easier now. I think to myself about um, models, for example. There's always been this like major discussion when it comes to supermodels versus Instagram models, and. Uh-huh you know how hard it was for a lot of those models to like be noticed and seen back in the you know the before before social media and you know now social media models they're like you can they get like a million clicks you know what i'm saying promotions you know ads all the time while these models that were working their ass off you know it's a process it was a a a major process and i you know i understand um what naomi campbell has always spoke about regarding it because longevity Uh is key especially in in this industry you know and Uh it's it's really interesting how content which is you know as great as it is and as creative as it is it it still has this sense of like how long you're gonna is it gonna last you know 
what's the longevity the numbers game for it and um you know just even regarding like like denzel washington for example he's been in the game for so long right and you're seeing someone that's on instagram posting some type of content and it's like I don't know. How does it measure up? I mean, maybe it's an, an evolution going on in the industry when it comes to content versus just the regular, you know, status yeah. quo. Yeah, there's definitely um, kind of a change going on. And, uh, you know, it, it, it seems like it's easier for people to get noticed or get recognition. But like you said, um, it's going to be longevity. How long are they going to last and stuff like that, you know? I think people tend not to put as much, um, I guess, work into the craft as well, you know, in my opinion, um, when it's easier like this, you know what I mean? So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, what's going on, you guys? What's going on? Thank you guys for your time. All right. I am back with Darius Devontae Green, my brother. Yeah. I have a question for you regarding SAG and non-union. You know, you know my story in which, you know, the main reason of why I joined SAG was the fact that when I was doing background work as a non-union, I felt like I wasn't as respected. As much as I've worked several different jobs or what have you outside of this whole arena, it just seemed like I didn't have as much respect, especially when it comes to the pay. I tell you, I think one of the shows I was on, it was like season two of a show, and I found out that the SAG members that were playing background for the set for three days, they made about $3,000 in three days. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and this was in New York City, by the way, this is not Atlanta, but it's just, when I when I saw that and when the guy told me that, the guy that was SAG... You know, and I know I know he's not exaggerating because I know how a lot of SAG folks do. You know, they make they make their money, especially uh -huh. before COVID. So I was like, let me just invest, do this whole payment plan and all that, and see what happens. Kid you not, it was like a wake up call for me because I was like, well, though I'm SAG, I need to get some more. I need more receipts. I need more experience with more speaking roles. Not theater roles, speaking roles for television or film. So it definitely was an eye-opener for me. What's your thoughts on um, when it comes to SAG and non-union work now? Because you're noticing that a lot of non-union work is more existing than SAG work, especially for certain types, right? Right, right. Yeah, um, there's definitely a lot of non-union work out there. Um, and you touched on it. I, I think um, you don't want to join too quick you want to get your your feet wet you want to get uh good speaking roles and things like that because i feel like if you join a stag too quick and you don't have that kind of foundation or that, um a couple things on your resume then you you're not they're not gonna you know i guess put, they're not gonna pick you as if someone else was sag and they have you know a little bit more experience you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I applaud you because you definitely took your time. I mean, you asked me about it and you didn't really know all about like the roles that I've done, like when it comes to like speaking roles for film. But you asked right. me, you were like, hey, man, what you think about SAG? And I was like, I love it. And this is like I was in the beginning of beginning stage of it, like getting jobs or whatever. But it was background work. So and it was like, you know, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. But then finding out not too long ago that like certain places like Georgia, which is a red state where they do not really applaud, like, they don't really care if you're SAG or non union unless you're like right. doing principal roles. So I was kind of like, my head was, you know, hitting on the wall because I was like, damn, I definitely was, I, I kind of rushed it. And I definitely hear where you're coming from when it comes to that. Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah. what's your hopes for the industry post COVID? You know, I just hope we you just get back into the swing of things, you know, continue to create art and, uh, you know, create things for people that, that's going to need it because we're going to need to, uh, um, you know, escape what we've been through or what we're going through, you know what I mean? Because we haven't had that, you know, a lot this year, everything closing down and things like that. And yeah. I feel like as far as the actors, there's going to be a lot of work 
out there coming. Um, so, you know, I'm just preparing myself for the opportunities that may come my way, you know, as well as seeking out opportunities. That's great. That's great. And then what advice do you have for creatives and actors during this time? You know, I just, uh, the big thing, I just think that they should stay creative, you know, stay working on your craft any way you can. Um, any little thing, um, find something that get your creative juices flowing, you know, stay prepared, stay ready for the opportunities when they come, because they're going to come. It's going to be like a flood of opportunities. Um, you know, like they say, preparation meets opportunity. So yeah, just stay prepared, stay ready. That's great. And one last question just for the road. <laughs> Would you, if you received an opportunity to stay long term, would you move to Canada like Vancouver or um, Toronto for film if they gave you the opportunity? Absolutely, yeah. Because um, you see uh, the changes, right? You notice that a lot of Hollywood sh- films are moving up there now. Absolutely. And um, even before that, they filmed a lot up there. Um, yeah. A lot of, and even more, like you said, is, is going that way. And yeah, I'm not opposed to that. I would definitely uh, be open to that opportunity. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Darius, for your time and just giving us that wisdom and feedback and just life itself and vibing with us for sure. I appreciate you, brother. Absolutely. I appreciate you, man. Keep doing your thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for listening to Vibe Talks with Javon. I'm your host, Javon. Be sure to go for your dreams take risk expand your skill set and not only just that be grounded in who you are take care bye-bye